Hi, so this is a brief demo of the uh, bitmap extensions I created for Turbo Pascal 3 under CPM on the Coleco Adam computer. As you well know, uh, Turbo Pascal 3 for CPM does not have any graphics capabilities and therefore you are usually limited to text mode only. Uh, which is a shame on the Atom because it has uh, really nice uh, graphics capabilities. Um, so I went ahead and uh, added these extensions using the Turbo Pascal package itself uh, with some assembly language support. But before I go ahead and demonstrate that, uh, I'm going to briefly go over the atypical development cycle using Turbo Pascal for those of you who are unfamiliar with it. Uh, Turbo Pascal is really a wonderful compiler for Pascal. Um, it compiles to small size, it's pretty fast and really easy to use. Um, it does have an integrated editor, but unfortunately it does not work well with the Atom likely to screen installation issues and I have yet to be able to get it to work properly. In any case, um, first you start with an editor to enter your source code and I use Adam Ed personally, but you can use your own favorite editor. AdamEd is a full screen 40 column editor I wrote in assembly language. And um, we can go ahead and load the program, which is called bmpdemo.ps. That's on B drive. Um, and that's about, uh, what is it, 100 and, uh, let's see, 166 lines of code. Um, so you go ahead and type in your program and then when you're done you just exit the editor, you save your file and um, then once you're back into CPM you go ahead and get Tur Turbo Pascal started by typing Turbo. And um, it'll take a few seconds uh, to load here and then it will ask you uh, whether you want uh, to include error messages, which you really should because they are very helpful, particularly for things like syntax errors. So yes, and then I go ahead and type O to enter the options menu. The reason I want to do that is I want to pick the compilation model I need. Um, typically, uh, by default, Turbo Pascal will compile to memory. However, for large programs, um, memory is probably not going to be enough and so you have to go to the comp file option where it will compile directly to a file on disk. This allows you to compile far larger programs than you would otherwise be able to. The third option is CHN5 which is chain file is used to chain programs. We're not going to be using that at this point here. So we go ahead and exit the option menu. Uh, first let's set it to comp file uh, over here. And uh, the reason I'm doing that is even though the demo program is only 160 something lines, but when I include all the bitmap extensions which add an additional 1000 line or so, then it becomes a pretty large program and it will not compile to memory. Plus Turbo Pascal adds its own uh, runtime routines to it, so um, it can easily inflate to a fairly large program. Alright, so once we set our option, quit. We quit by typing Q and then we're ready to compile. Press C, you type in your file name again, uh, BMP demo. I don't need to type the PS extension because Turbo Pascal assumes it automatically and off it goes. Um, and it'll take roughly, I don't know, a minute, um, maybe less to load. It's not fast, um, particularly on this computer, but um, you know, it's really fairly tolerable. And you can see the lines adding up fairly quickly here. Um, if you do end up with some error, um, it will. Uh, you can press escape and then it will take you to the uh, editor where you can actually see which line your program uh, got an error on and so you can correct it. This is really helpful uh, during development for sure. Unfortunately, you cannot edit it well uh, with the integrated editor. You still have to exit and load your own editor to correct the program. We're almost there yet, so it's going to be, yeah, about what 1500 plus lines here, uh, considering we have a 160 something line program ourselves. All right, it's done. So now that it's done, you can you have two options. You can run it straight from within Turbo Pascal, or you can exit Turbo Pascal and run the comp file directly from disk. We can just go ahead and run it. So press R and it will run the program. 
So the first uh, and most basic function of any bitmap package is the ability to put a pixel, a single pixel on screen. And so here we are. Um, as you can see, it's pretty fast to, to do that. Um, however, I should state that the pixel drawing function uh, generally is pretty slow with Turbo Pascal. And for two reasons. One is because uh, it's not a straightforward process to access a pixel on screen because of the way the video display processor is laid out. And second, because this is a compiled program, it's not going to be 100% as fast as a pure assembly language. It's going to be fast, and certainly faster than basic by far, but not nearly as fast as assembly. So you're going to see some definite differences. Anyway, so that's our pixel drawing function. Next, we can uh, use our fill function, which allows you to fill a rectangular area with a background color of your choice from 16 colors. Um, and uh, that can come in pretty handy as a backdrop for selected areas of the screen to draw on or type text on, etc. Next, we have a circle function. Um, and uh, we have also a line function standard line function. A lot of possibilities of these two functions. And you also have the ability to create, define and put in, put on screen your own uh, characters. Here I defined a small car and a smiley face. You can create anything you want. And the details on how to do that uh, and, and also instruction for everything else in this package uh, will be in the PDF instruction file that comes in with the uh, zip file on uh, the uh, uh, smart basic forum all right and next of course we have sprites um, and this is a powerful feature uh, for the atom um, and um, here I'm using a magnified sprites which means they're double sized uh, twice I mean not double sized but they're magnified twice uh, and uh, it's alternating between two different patterns to give you that squishy feel. Um, you can change colors uh, on the fly as well as the character definition on the fly. Um, one thing I should mention is that in bitmap mode um, you cannot uh, have sprite auto motion, which means you have to physically or manually, I should say, move the sprites uh, uh, with your program rather than rely, it, rely on it to move. Uh, by itself as you would normally in uh, normal graphics mode. Um, next uh, we have text mode. So we have two types of text. We have uh, uh, high resolution 42 column text which you can see here is pretty slow in drawing and the reason for that is uh, every character is actually being painted pixel by pixel on the bitmap screen. And so it's pretty slow. But the major advantage of using this uh, text mode is that you can place um, text uh, anywhere on the screen within a one pixel resolution. So um, that really gives you uh, really fine grained uh, control over the positioning of the text. On the other hand, if you don't need such precision, um, you can always use standard graphics text, which is uh, limited to the 32 columns by 24 lines of the standard graphics screen. And it's pretty fast, as you can see here. It just takes less than a second to draw all this. So, whichever mode you use depends on what your needs are. And last but not least, uh, we can load in a uh, bitmap full screen image from disk and display it on the screen. Uh, similar to what I've demonstrated with my slideshow program. Here's Star Trek. And uh, of course, um, it's not just about displaying pretty pictures. You can also overlay any of the graphic elements I've discussed uh, before on top of that image um, for special effects, whatever fits your needs. And uh, so I went ahead and uh, um, took that image from the ending of the 2010 Space Odyssey movie. Um, I thought it would be a fun way to demonstrate the overlay. And there we are. Please feel free to forward any uh, comments or suggestions my way. Otherwise, you take care.